are two ways of organizing economic activity. Command, the method of the army, or voluntary exchange, the method of the market. That's really false as a practical matter. In practice, with any complicated modern society, it is simply impossible to organize it by command. There is no cybernetic system, there is no computing system powerful enough to enable somebody at the center or however you decentralize it through command to control the last detailed activity of everybody along the line. You know that the standard way, one of the standard devices for labor disputes is to throw the rule book at the employer, to, or as they sometimes say, to work according to rule. You simply instruct the workers, you follow every single rule in the rule book precisely in detail. That'll bring any factory in the world to a halt. <laughs> Some, you cannot dispense with the separated knowledge and interest of the people at the bottom of the line. And that's why, except in the simplest cases, and even in the simplest cases, we're all members of families, and the standard example that is ordinarily given about the simple command economy as a family, it, it used to be the father, it's now the mother, who's in control. But if you, all of us have been in families, and you know you really can't organize a family by command. You have to do it by voluntary agreement. I don't know how many of you have read Hedrick Smith's splendid book on the Russians. But he discusses the Russian economy. There's a case in which command has been followed, carried perhaps to its highest extent in any country in the world, in any society in the world. But as he points out, mostly, Russia is really organized through voluntary exchange of one kind or another. As you all probably know, to go back to my first example of agriculture, something like 3% of the arable land in Soviet Union is in small private plots. The statistics are that something like a third of all the food of the country comes from that 3% of the arable land. I'm not saying it grows on it. I suspect it comes through it. <laughs> the Russians are not without their ingenuity in getting around systems, too. And it, but much more beyond that, Smith points out that if something goes wrong with your electric light fixture, the last thing you'll do in the world is to call the government organization for the repair and maintenance of light bulbs you will instead find a moonlighting fella who will come around in the evening and for a private side payment fix your electricity. Otherwise, you'll be without electricity for, well, any, an indefinite length of time. There is a flourishing voluntary exchange economy. But even more than that, within the factories, within the uh, uh, governmental arrangements, all the way down the line, you have to rely on people using their own initiative. So that, in fact, there is only one way in which any complicated society can be organized. But there is an enormous difference between a system in which that is permitted to be the dominant way and a system in which that ha way has to overcome the distorting influences of the commands. What you have in every society is fundamentally the use a voluntary exchange at the bottom. But if it is accompanied by an excess of attempted command, the combination of the two is tyranny and misery. The command produces a tyranny. And the most that voluntary exchange fighting against those commands can do is to prevent the misery from being absolute. It at least relieves the misery a little and allows the system to operate. Let me close by emphasizing that I've been discussing the role of the market in a free exchange, the role of freedom, economic freedom, and its connection with political, human, religious freedom. That the role of the market, this point I'm making about the market enabling you to separate the economic activities from the other activities is what's essential to the maintenance of political and uh, social freedom. But let me emphasize that I am not, uh, I am emphasizing that because I think that's what we need more of. 
I am not arguing that government does not have a role. Of course it does. I am not an anarchist, but I am persuaded that the problem of our society today is too much government, not too little. Indeed, I am persuaded that government is failing to perform the functions which it alone can perform because we are trying to have it perform functions which it cannot perform. In Walter Lippmann's phrase, which I may say goes back to the 1920s, we are an over-governed society. I believe we can get back on the right track only as the public at large comes to recognize that the direction we have been going is a false direction, a direction that will lead us not where we want to be, but where we do not want to be, and that we can get back only on the right track only by stopping and then reversing that trend. Thank you.